Welcome to a special half hour of contemporary Christian music featuring the words and music of Dallas Home. With segments from Knott's Berry Farm, a special TBN soundstage, the recording studio, and a concert performance. I got love, love, love in my heart. I got peace like a river, never will part. I got joy on my mind, a smile on my face. I used to have a head. I got love in this place. I got love. Now, Dallas Hall. So you got your heart. Broken to And you hurt so bad You don't know what to do And you think that you're The only one Who's ever felt this way But there was sure I'm Dallas Holm, and I suppose that uh, if there was any one predominant topic in all the songs that I write, I suppose maybe the area of healing would, would be the predominant 
topic because I have written so many songs that deal with the healing, especially of hurts and broken hearts. <laughs> song that was born out of uh, the hurting experiences of, of some people that are very close to me. Uh, my mother, my wife, uh, an aunt of mine, who all went through similar periods of uh, real depression, real just kind of down times in their life. And I, I, I hesitate to say that almost because some people, when you, when you talk about someone going through a period of depression, people tend to look at them like, oh, they must have a screw loose or something. And that's not it. I'm a, I, uh, I'm amazed how many people go through times in their life when they just seem to lose the joy and there's no real explanation for it. It's just a time of real testing, it seems like, a time to, uh, it, it seems to always build faith and confidence in the, in the Lord. And uh, I had the experience of going through these kind of times with people close to me. And uh, realizing that many in the body suffer these same problems, I wrote this song because uh, the Bible teaches us that there's no temptation, and, and I think we can take it even beyond the realm of temptation. There's nothing that we ever suffer that the Lord is not uh, intimately acquainted with. He, he knew what it was like to feel deserted and, uh, and alone even by his heavenly Father. He knew those feelings. Uh, the Bible says he's touched with the feelings of our infirmities, the very emotional. He doesn't, he doesn't just say he's touched with our infirmities, but the very feelings of our infirmities. And uh, I just wanted to encourage people, you know, that Jesus knows you're here. I had the privilege for uh, about ten and a half years of working with David Wilkerson. And in the crusades that we did all over the world, when, when young people would come forward to give their lives to the Lord at the end, Brother Dave would often kind of interview them, ask them, you know, why did you come forward or what's going on in your life? And I remember one time, and uh, we were out in California somewhere, as I feel like it was in Bakersfield or, or somewhere like that, 
And he asked one girl, uh, what is Jesus doing in your life or what happened to you tonight? And she said, she said the statement, Jesus got a hold of my life and he won't let me go. And I got to think about that. I thought that was kind of a, kind of a nice phrase that caught my attention. I went home to the motel room that night and wrote the song, Jesus got a hold of my life and won't let me go. And uh, what was funny is one time when we were doing, uh, it was the Peace, Joy, and Love album. And I was going over with Phil Johnson all the songs for the album and went through the material and my wife was there in the room with us and I was kind of, you know, showing him the different songs and we were picking material for the album. And Linda says, play him that other one. And I said, ah, no, it's not, you know, it's not that great a song. Well, she says, play it, play it for him. And Phil said, yeah, come on, what else you got? And I said, ah, no, it's, it's just a real simple little song. So they finally got it out of me. And uh, it was Jesus Got a Hold of My Life and turned out to be probably one of the first, uh, you know, as we say, really successful songs. Uh, quite a number of other artists, Imperials and Gaithers and Truth and I don't remember who all, but uh, cut that song. And it, it taught me, I always looked at that song, it taught me a lot about songwriting because uh, I realized that I'm not a very good judge of my own material. Sometimes songs that I might throw away, uh, someone else uh, might like. So it, I think that song helped me to be more aware of that part of my ministry. I have really become sensitive in, in recent years, and when I say recent years, I would say within the last seven or eight years, to the fact that there are many, many people in the body of Christ who are hurting, who have tremendous hurts. Uh, you know, there was a time in my life in ministry when I didn't realize that. I, my ministry was geared almost exclusively to non-Christians, 
the belief being that those who didn't know the Lord were the ones that had needs, the ones that knew the Lord, you know, they knew the Lord, they were saved. What problems could they possibly have? But as I grew and matured in the Lord and, and went through some struggles in my own life and began to become much more aware of the needs of others in the body, some close to me, then I became sensitive to the fact that surely Christians, all Christians must at some point suffer. Uh, the Bible talks about suffering. There's a you know, school of thought going around today that would have us believe that if you're Christian, you're not going to suffer, you're not going to have any problems, but I, I don't subscribe to that. Uh, uh, Jesus suffered. The Bible says he learned obedience through the things he suffered. The Bible talks about uh, rejoicing that we're counted worthy to suffer, in, and it talks about sharing in the fellowship of his sufferings. Now, it isn't to go around with your head hanging down. It's, a, it, it's just an understanding we should have that part of, the, part of the deal in spiritual warfare is that you can get hurt once in a while and get wounded and, and hurt. It is a struggle. And uh, realizing that, being sensitive to that, I have addressed that fact a lot more in my music and tried to encourage people and bring healing to their lives. Here comes a rain, just a steady pour, and all my happiness just walked out the door, and I don't think I'll ever smile. I don't see how I don't know where My heart is broke I've never felt such pain And I don't think I'll ever be the same Well they tell me Lord you know just how I feel Well is it true Is it real Touch me with love What's that I see? The sun's coming through Clouds are all gone The sky is still blue And I never thought I'd ever see What do you know? What can I say? It touched me with love. You held to my hand. You stood by my side. You held me to stand. Joy has replaced the sorrow I knew and all of my happiness is.
losing you Touch me with love Please take my hand I'm too hurt to cry About uh, seven years ago, we did an entire album. In fact, the title of the album is entitled All That Matters. And most of the material on that album was born out of personal experience with uh, some real hurt and frustration, struggles in, in uh, my life, in the life of my wife, uh, some physical things, some emotional things. And I think it was at that time that the Lord really got my attention to realize that there are many people in the body that have tremendous hurts tremendous frustra frustrations and, and burdens. I think up till that time, I thought the only people with problems were sinners. They just needed Jesus. But Christians, you know, they were saved. What problems did they have? But as I began to go through real struggles and, and deep hurts myself, I realized that certainly much of the body must be suffering like this. And so I wrote a lot of material. And I think maybe possibly one of my favorite, uh, all-time favorite songs is the song, I've Never Seen the Righteous Forsaken. It's based on scripture where David talks about, though I be old and gray, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed begging for bread. And it was a tremendous promise of the Lord to me at that time, even as I prayed those prayers that didn't seem to get answered, to know that he would never leave me or forsake me, and, and he was always there with me, and, and uh, the righteous will never be forsaken. Times they make it rough. You may not have all you want, but you'll always have enough. And when your darkest time comes, just remember what I said. I've never seen the righteous forsaken Or the seed begging for bread Oh, I know it seems so hopeless And you don't know what to pray Just hold on a little longer Answers soon to come the Business coaching space is focused on building visionary business owners and their second command. 
with me today is the Clayton Stenson, not Stevenson. He I uh, certainly believe in healing. I believe the Lord can heal bodies. I believe He can heal hearts. I can he, he can heal broken homes. There are some today who say, no, He doesn't do that anymore. But uh, my Bible says He changes not. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And uh, He has worked healing works in my life. He's working a, a healing work in my life right now. And uh, because of that, because of what I know in my own life and the experience of others and in Scripture, I know that he can work and will work that same healing in your life. No, he died. 